Mac Davis. Remember him? And a hungry little boy with a running nose plays in the street as the cold wind blows in the ghetto. How funny. Oh yeah, now this is what I'm screaming. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I went off key just a little bit right there. Yes, 1976. I can remember being in, um, oh, I don't know, about the fifth or sixth grade. And, uh... We had a Halloween party at school. I guess it was about 1976 because we all could bring in our favorite 45. Now, for you youngins, that is a 45. And anyway, I just happened to have the 45 of the hustle. And I had this wonderful memory of all of us in Halloween costumes doing the hustle. Mm-hmm. These record albums are a trip. All these cassettes, all these CDs. Okay, I'm gonna get out of this department and go look at the glassware and then I'll come back. Let's go. Well now most of you will recognize this pattern, or at least you'll have a good idea that it's Either Faustoria's American, and that's probably the first guess, but uh, actually the gentleman who designed this for the Faustoria company at some point left Faustoria and jumped over to Jeanette Glass Company. It wasn't that unusual for companies to sell molds to one another when they went out of business or for designers to trade ideas or to go from glass house to glass house. Anyway, the man whose name I can't remember left Faustoria, went to Jeanette, and he created a pattern almost identical to Faustoria's cube, I'm sorry, uh, to Faustoria's American, and they named it cube. Of course, cubism was popular, and, and at that time in the 1930s, 20s, 30s, the whole deco era, and Jeanette made this pattern called uh, cube, same designer. Looks very much uh, alike. Now, of course, um, the depth of the cubes on the Jeanette is not as uh, deep, not as pronounced as on the American. They're shallower, and it's just not good glass. Well, I shouldn't say that. It's not as good as Falstoria glass. Uh, <laughs> as Falstoria glass. So uh, this, uh, the mold lines are going to be rough, and, and it, it is on these. They're not smooth at all. Um, you wouldn't quite cut yourself on it, but you can certainly feel mold lines here that haven't been smoothed out. And the Faustoria glass, of course, was uh, fire polished. It was, it was it just, it's better glass. It has more clarity. As I said, more depth to the cubes. And uh, it's just uh, much, much better glass than the Jeanette. Now, Jeanette, you'll find it in clear. You'll find it in pink. Uh, blah, blah, blah. What other colors? There are other colors you'll find cube in, in Jeanette. Uh, crystal as well. I usually find it in, in green. So anyway, just to let you know, in case you didn't, when you see this, it's not always American by Falstoria. It could very well be cube 
by the Jeanette Company. And um, it's not a particular pattern that is a favorite of mine. I don't collect it, but I just saw it, so I thought I would run my mouth for a minute. Okay? And now that I'm done running my mouth, I'm just going to run the aisles. And see what else we can find. 25th anniversary set right there. Here's that open lace again, or Old Colony by Anchor Hawking that we saw a couple, a couple of days ago. And you do most often find it in crystal rather than pink. And you gotta be careful with it because all of these little spokes or whatever you wanna call them in here, they're often uh, cracked. And this one is chipped as a matter of fact. But there's a lone piece of it. Yes, my basket is empty. see if I can trade hands. I'm sorry I'm jiggling. You guys recognize this? I think I spy a uh, Pyrex pie plate. Let's see. Yeah. What do they call that? Lime green? I think Pyrex has a special name for it. I'm always looking for interesting lids. And I'm not seeing any. There's two little orphaned uh, Lustaware shakers, Japan. I love this one. I wish it had its mate. 50 cents. I should just buy that one for 50 cents. Put cinnamon in it. Oh, there's poor old Shirley. Oops. There she is. And they want $5 for it. Now, folks, you know that these were produced. They probably made millions of these. They're readily available. They did reproduce them. This is not a reproduction, but it's not worth $5, especially as brown as the graphic is of Shirley Temple. They, they just, mm, 30 years ago, but not today. So, bye-bye, Shirley. Surely we can find something more valuable than that. Please don't call me Shirley. Ooh, here's a, a hairpin or also known as Newport by Hazel Atlas. And it's in the amethyst color, although, is it? Yeah, get, yeah it is. It's kind of brownish looking, but. There you go, huh? 1930s. You go. Here's something you need. Very nice. And here's one lone piece of petal, petal wear. Look, everyone, I told you it was only a matter of time before I actually found a Picasso. Um, I didn't find a Picasso, but I found a Vincent Van Gogh. Now, what is this? Well, first of all, it's covered in nicotine, but we're going to take care of that some other time. It's an actual painting, so it's not textured cardboard. I know what that is. Look really closely, and you'll see that... Um, it's actually painted. Now it's a copy of a, of a Vincent Van Gogh painting. 
and it is on a canvas stretcher. This probably dates to the 60s. Let me turn it over and let you see the back of it. Um, maybe the 50s. Well, I paid five dollars for it and you can see uh, the wooden frame and the and the canvas and the kind of uh, stretcher that it's on. So this is old. Um, we can sort of date it because it was ma made in uh, West Germany. So you guys know your history, you know your West Germany dates. I don't have to go through that. So um, we'll say sometime from, you know, the 50s or 60s, obviously. And anyway, um, this is describing the actual painting by Van Gogh, or as my English friends like to say, Van Gogh. <laughs> I think that's how you say it over there. Very cute. And, um, and then over here in German, let's see. So they've written on here a little more of a description about Van Gogh. And I don't know. See, it's very difficult. We can see here, uh, clearly it says reproduction. I can't see all of it, but I think that's in German. And there's a lot of dust, a lot of dust on it, you can see. And as I said, it's pretty nicotine stained. But anyway, I'm sure it has no value. It's probably cheap tourist art. I'm gonna definitely clean it before I take it inside. But let me put it back down and uh, let you have another look at it. It's pretty large. <laughs> anyway, my mouth almost hit the floor when I saw it because, you know, I'm not an art, uh, was not an art major or an art historian, but I certainly recognize a Van Gogh when I, um, a Van Gogh when I see it. And uh, I just think it's cool to have a reproduction Van Gogh that's not a print and not a piece of textured cardboard, but somebody actually copied this and painted it. Now, is it worth trying to get all that nicotine off of it? Eh, we'll see. <laughs> I love it. Ooh. Now that, oh, for Pete's sake, look at that big hunk. That pattern is called Moondrop, and it's by New Martinsville. You don't often see it. Very distinctive pattern, but honestly, with that big chip in it, maybe they didn't see it. Okay, a little uh, time out from thrifting to show you something that I bought last summer at a flea market, but haven't really done anything with yet. Now, I'm in a different location, um, which doesn't really matter, but for those of you who've been watching me for a while, you're going to recognize the lovely lady on the right. That's the turn of the century Art Nouveau Spelter figural lamp that I restored, oh, several months ago. Uh, did a full restoration on her and um, lit it up and you know you, you saw this in an old video and there's the new reproduction uh, silk cord that I put on there which is makes it look original but look what's standing next to her this giant who towers over her okay um, just to show you how big these figural lamps can be uh, let's talk about this one for a minute but let's take a look at it and who is it? What is going on? Well, let you see. Take a look at what's what he's holding in his right hand. Or I guess that would be his left hand. And this actually can be uh, pulled upward. But right now it's just sitting in there like that. What does that look like to you? Hmm? All right, now what's over here in his other hand? What does that look like to you? 
All right. All right. What are these strange gizmos behind him? What on earth is that supposed to be? And that. And what is he standing on? You say, aha! He's standing on a winged helmet. And I remember studying my um, ancient Roman history, so the winged helmet. Well, that must be Mercury. Well, it is supposed to be Mercury, the Roman god Mercury. Let's look at some other hints. Now, down here is a tag, or a label, and we can just barely, barely make out what it says. Can you make out what it says? Aha, you can right there. Something, 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 G-R-A-P-H. Yes, it says telegraph. And indeed, we see telegraph equipment, transmitting equipment, the coils here, and uh, so forth that would be used around the turn of the century in telegraphy. And uh, not only do we know it's Mercury because he's on his winged helmet, but he's also, among other things, the god, Roman god of um, communication and messages. So that's why he was chosen to be the figure on this lamp. Now, what's even more exciting to me is now you may recognize in one hand... These are supposed to be the uh, glass insulators that would be on the top of telegraph poles, yes? Okay, and then up here in this hand we have a wonderful cluster of very energetic lightning bolts. So the lightning bolts, the glass telegraph insulators, and the telegraph equipment below, even if the plate was missing that barely says telegraph on it, we could figure that out. Now, what's the problem? <laughs> Some do-gooder took a can of radiator paint, as we say, and had a good old time with this. Took it out in the backyard and ruined it. Yep, that's what they did. Now, the original patina is gone. Uh, I don't know what condition this was in before someone spray painted it, but this is going to have to come off. This needs a total restoration. They even went in and sprayed deep into the old sockets. Can you see that? Oh my goodness. People, please stop ruining antiques. Anyway, the good news is this gentleman is completely restorable. How fantastic. Look, these come right out of his hands. The fact that this has remained... Now this lamp dates to the 1890s to about 1910, you know, turn of the century, and these are still here, these pieces. They haven't been lost. What we are missing are a couple of the pieces of foliage from the back. Now that's typical. These get bent and they come off uh, we're missing a leaf right there. A few more pieces, probably another leaf from up here. You can get these off of junk lamps, you know, that are bit that maybe have pieces broken off. So that can be restored. We can get this nasty paint off and get down to the spelter and put a new patina on. It's not going to be the original, but this is a rare lamp. Who made it? I don't know. It was made in. Germany. That's the only thing I find on it is the word Germany, and that's underneath this wooden base is um, a replacement. Now, we know sometimes these lamps, especially uh, in this form, they were sometimes made as newel post lamps, uh, but they were also oftentimes just table lamps like that, and they did not necessarily sit on a newel post in a staircase. Now, this is kind of unusual. The telegraph was invented uh, long before this lamp would have been made. So, who made it and what was it for? Was it just an oddity that would be for home use? Was it in a telegraph office? Uh, I don't know. 
I've tried to research it and can't find a thing. But I'll tell you this, antique telegraphy collecting, you know, collecting of antique uh, telegraph items, that's a pretty big deal. It's a wonderful, um, there's a wonderful group of folks out there into old telegraph keys and so forth. Somebody is going to be thrilled to get this and have it restored. So I wanted to show it to you. Uh, I just listed it in my eBay shop. I'm starting out with a bid of $99. Yes, it needs a complete restoration, but where are you going to find another one? So, if you're a collector of antique telegraphy, antique telegraphy, that's hard to say, this is going to be the lamp for you. I thought about restoring it myself, and I said, eh, it's so rare, I think it's rare, and such a wonderful piece, we're just going to pass this on and let another collector have a hold of it who would be interested in it. So just back up again and let you see how big it is compared to uh, the lovely lady over here with the two sockets. And that's made out of spelter. He weighs about 10 pounds. And again, these lamps were popular during the sort of the Art Nouveau era, the last uh, 10 years of the 19th century, first 10 years of the 20th century, right about that, 1890 to 1910. Okay, if anybody knows anything about this lamp, I'd love to know. Okay, well, this is Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop about to wrap this one up, saying thanks for watching everyone, and so long for now.